Zambia is a sub-Saharan country. We're basically, we're in the southern part of Africa, southern central, just above Zimbabwe, surrounded by eight countries. And we are landlocked, a population of about 12, 13 million. And currently, our GDP growth is, tends to stand around between 6 and 7 uh, percent. So we're, we're, we're growing quite quickly, uh, but our population is still quite poor. We, out of our population, about um, 60 to 70 percent of the population is poor. Uh, we're currently growing, especially in the um, mining sector with copper. Uh, we have agriculture, which is also growing quite quickly because we're expanding and opening up new areas for agriculture. And um, our manufacturing, we're um, basically growing our energy sector and inviting those who can complement that energy sector with manufacturing to come in and invest in the country. So there's a lot of uh, investment that's going on. And we're hoping, uh, as is pictured in our fifth, uh, in our sixth national development plan and our 2030 vision, we're hoping that by 2030 we would become a, a, a middle income, possibly a high middle income country by then, because we're on the verge now of becoming a low middle income. And if we can work hard enough during that period, instead of stagnating, we could possibly go into the high end and even break through into the developed country status. Although our dependence on aid began uh, at independence, because the relationship changed with uh, the various countries, Germany, Finland and others, um, it only intensified in the mid-80s. Uh, the momentum grew, especially uh, when we became multi-party uh, in, in nature, uh, countries began to pour in a lot more money than they had been before. Because prior to 1991, we had been single-party state. Um, the outcome of this assistance has been mixed. In many cases, the assistance has gone a long way to helping people in education, in health, helping uh, grow our industries in some cases, uh, but more in the social sectors than in the growth or economic sectors. And in more recent times, however, there's been this development of putting money directly into the budget through budget support. And what this has done is it has uh, helped government to make its own decisions as to where it would spend and how it would spend. But the accountabilities have been very difficult to cope with because, again, our institutional uh, framework for managing not only aid, but even our own financing uh, has been limited. And so we've needed to reform the way in which we uh, uh, deal with our public uh, expenditure, with our financial uh, systems and accounting systems. So. Uh, aid has contributed, yes. Uh, there are constraints in managing that aid, but aid has also had some downsides. Um, there is a, a bit of, quite a bit of dependency on aid uh, with regard to some institutions and even the mindset of uh, individuals within the country. And this needs offsetting, in a sense, by showing uh, leadership as a country in how we use aid so that it's not subjecting us to a constant dependence. The Paris Declaration with its five pillars uh, uh, basically began to be implemented in Zambia prior to uh, February uh, 2005 because we were in a sense initiating uh, uh, harmonization uh, much earlier. We started very well. Lessons were learned by other countries from us in the way harmonization should happen. But we did not consolidate our gains by institutionalizing them. We didn't embed them in the various uh, organizations that run our, our country. And as such, 
we have it as a concept, we have it as a mindset, but not so much in the way we do business. And so hopefully as a result of this um, uh, evaluation, we might be able to put back on the table the need to operationalize uh, the Paris Declaration in our, in, in, in our workings. The weakest point is mutual accountability. From our side as a government, we've been able to account uh, uh, for the numbers of questions, the numbers of meetings that we have had with cooperating partners on the development cooperation. However, from their side uh, as cooperating partners, predictability has been an issue. Uh, accountability has also been an, an issue. Um, and being able to just dialogue around issues without them escalating upwards. That's also been an issue. Uh, there's a tendency for cooperating partners to want to see the minister and to avoid seeing the technocrats who are able to fix the systems. But even then, the, the means by which that dialogue may happen are not very well articulated. Uh, so in that sense, uh, we have homework to do on our table, both as uh, leaders within the nation but also as cooperating partners with an interest of uh, being at an equal basis.